In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, the constant gladness of being devoted to you, for it is full and lasting happiness to serve with constancy the author of all that is good. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Maccabees. There grew a sinful offshoot, Antiochus Epiphanes, son of King Antiochus, once a hostage in Rome. He became king in the 137th year of the kingdom of the Greeks. It was then that there emerged from Israel a set of renegades who led many people astray. Come, they said, let us reach an understanding with the pagans surrounding us. For since we separated ourselves from them, many misfortunes have overtaken us. This proposal proved acceptable, and a number of the people eagerly approached the king, who authorized them to practice the pagan observances. So they built a gymnasium in Jerusalem, such as the pagans have, disguised their circumcision, and abandoned the holy covenant, submitting to the heathen rule as willing slaves of impiety. Then the king issued a proclamation to his whole kingdom that all were to become a single people, each renouncing his particular customs. All the pagans conformed to the king's decree, and many Israelites chose to accept his religion, sacrificing to idols and profaning the Sabbath. The king erected the abomination of desolation above the altar, and altars were built in the surrounding towns of Judah, and incense offered at the doors of houses and in the streets. Any books of the law that came to light were torn up and burned. Whenever anyone was discovered possessing a copy of the covenant or practicing the law, the king's decree sentenced him to death. Yet there were many in Israel who stood firm and found the courage to refuse unclean food. They chose death rather than contamination by such fair or profanation of the holy covenant, and they were executed. It was a dreadful wrath that visited Israel. The Word of the Lord Give me life, O Lord, and I will do your will. I am seized with indignation at the wicked who forsake your law. Though the nets of the wicked ensnared me, I remembered your law. Give me life, O Lord, and I will do your will. Redeem me from man's oppression, and I will keep your precepts. Those who harm me unjustly draw near. They are far from your law. Give me life, O Lord and I will do your will. Salvation is far from the wicked, who are heedless of your statutes. I look at the faithless with disgust. They ignore your promise. Give me life, O Lord, and I will do your will. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Anyone who follows me will have the light of life. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. As Jesus drew near to Jericho, there was a blind man sitting at the side of the road, begging. When he heard the crowd going past, he asked what it was all about. And they told him that Jesus the Nazarene was passing by. So he called out, Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. The people in front scolded him and told him to keep quiet. 
but he shouted all the louder, Son of David, have pity on me. Jesus stopped and ordered them to bring the man to him. And when he came up, asked him, What do you want me to do for you? Sir, he replied, Let me see again. Jesus said to him, Receive your sight. Your faith has saved you. And instantly his sight returned, and he followed him, praising God, and all the people who saw it gave praise to God for what had happened. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear friends, today's reading challenges us to see the faith that we have. How are we doing with the faith that we have now? When our faith is shaken and tested, can we still see God? When our trust in God is being put on trial, can we still cling on Him in this difficult time? Faith is a gift from God. It is the blind man's faith in Jesus that prompted him to call out to Him and to ask for healing, for the restoration of his sight. He did not just receive physical sight, but in addition is given spiritual insight which leads him to follow Jesus. His faith in Jesus leads him to vision a new way of life. In a similar way, the deep faith of the Jews in the first reading leads them to see what they must do to experience the true healing of God. They are willing to put their lives on the line to preserve the traditions and practices of their faith in response to the persecution by the Greeks. So, my dear brothers and sisters, how are we doing with the faith that we have now? When life gets tough and blurry and nothing seems to work out, let us all be reminded of today's readings. To call out to God and ask Him, to open the eyes of our hearts so that we may see what He wants us to see and to do what He wants us to do. And may it lead us to experience the true healing of God. And so with faith and confidence, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Let us pray. We have partaken of the gifts of this sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth in charity, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the Almighty God bless us all and our loved ones, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a blessed day, and until then, take care of yourself and take care of each other.